I got my root sweatpants on. I got my comfy shirt on. I got my tea and I'm ready to spill the tea. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to talk about the top five things that I dislike a lot <laughs> that is very popular in the fountain pen world. I'm in full sweatpant gear mode. <laughs> I've got my Tazo chai tea with a bit of honey. It is a beautifully sunny day out and I am feeling it. Mm, I love days like this. I don't have to work today. <sighs> it's amazing. I do love my job. I just also very much love days off. <laughs> so um, I talk a lot, pretty much at length on this channel about things that I love, hence the intro. <laughs> but I get asked a lot what things that are kind of popular or whatever that I don't like. And I've talked about it here and there before. Um, but today I'm going to tell you the top five things that I dislike. <laughs> Um, and the first one, I have some of them actually with me to, to show you, um, but the first one, I don't really, because it's not a thing, but it is a thing. And that is shimmering inks. <sighs> now, shimmering inks have their time and place. I have some shimmering ink. Yes, Parker? She was totally fine the entire time. And then I turned on the camera and now she's like, mom, I wanna play. Well, if you can hear her, apologies. Um, I have some shimmering inks. In fact, I just picked up two samples of shimmering inks um, that are from the Dye Mine ink uh, calendar from last year, 2019. Uh, I think it's Happy Holidays and Jack Frost. I only like to use them with dip pens while I'm writing typically holiday cards or holiday letters or something to do with the holidays. <laughs> Ordinarily, I don't like them and I don't like to use them in pens, um, really only dip pens. I used to use them in like Jin Hao pens um, or things that I could like take apart pretty easily um, because shimmer <sighs> is so hard to clean. My goodness, the color comes out pretty quickly actually in every shimmering ink I've ever had because a lot of shimmering inks are extra lubricated so that the like the particles don't get caught, um, you know, and, and, and reduce your flow. Uh, but the shimmer itself, whoa, <laughs> it's really difficult to clean out of fountain pens. Um, and typically, I just don't have good experiences with shimmering inks when you have them in pens longer than like two weeks. I start to notice some problems, some flow problems, um, some clogging, some drying um, in my pens uh, if I have them inked up too long with them. And I just don't love the look of shimmering inks. It's not something that I want in my fountain pens uh, or in my like writing almost ever. <laughs> like I said, the holidays are pretty much the only exception to that. Um, I used to love shimmering inks when they first came out because it was a novelty. It was something new. I thought it was cool. Um, but now, nah, nah, nah. No, thank you. I do love sheen. That is what I hunt. Not every single time do I need it, but I pr usually prefer inks that have sheen over ones that don't. Um, because if you know me, you also know that I am obsessed with very, very wet writing fountain pens. Uh, so sheen looks bellissimo on those. So that is the first thing that I don't like that a lot of people do. Um, so shimmering aches. The second thing that I don't really like um, that a lot of people do and it's sort of a mixed bag with fountain pen people, I find. Some love it, some don't. That's the Filofax notebook. Um, I bought this very early on in my fountain pen, like career, if you wanna call it that. Uh, very early on. Um, I guess, let me see if I have any dates in here. This is what I used to use to write all of my fountain pen reviews in 
way back in the day. So literally I started with this. So my very first uh, review that I ever did, which was on the M uh, Pelican M600. Uh, oh, there you go. I published it January 22nd, 2016. <laughs> um, you know, so I wrote out pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about, the tea that I wanted to talk about, the pros of the pen, the cons of the pen, uh, you know, the conclusion that I wanted, pretty much everything. Um, so for this one, I ended up talking about uh, David's Tea Nepal Black, which used to be my favorite tea of all time. Now it is not. Uh, I am an Earl Grey fan through and through. Um, apparently it used to cost $9.90. I think it's up to like $12 now. Um, yeah, I had a quote. Um, Tell audience video will be Pelican M600 like they can't read. So, I mean, yeah, I used to write down every single one. And so this was January 2016 when I started. And it looks as though I stopped writing it January of 2017. So I used it for the very first year of my YouTube career. Um, and I don't like it. <laughs> uh, the paper is terrible for fountain pens. Uh, the majority of fountain pens feather. Um, the actual like book itself is fine. Um, but a lot of the paper, especially in the beginning of the notebook is, has torn out. So like, uh, they're all broken. They're just kind of hanging in there a little bit. Um, and I just, yeah, it's not, it's not a good experience. I don't, yeah, I don't recommend it. Um, I don't really like the feel of this anymore. Um, nah. I just, I just don't like it. I like the basic concept, uh, but if this, you know, was like in the tea world, this would be, this would be a Tetley tea. <laughs> it gets the job done, but I mean, you're not really enjoying it. So I don't really love the Filofax. So that's number two. Number three is also something I don't physically have. Um, well, I do, but you're not really gonna be able to see it. Um, and that's flex pens, flex writing pens, flex nibs, whichever way you wanna call it. Um, I don't really like them. Uh, reason being is because I have no need for the flex experience. Um, it, it doesn't really make its way into my writing ever. <laughs> um, if I want a wider line, I just use a broader nib. Um, and I just have more problems with flex pens than I do like positives. So I find with a lot of flex pens, be that a, a, a cheaper noodlers or a very expensive, you know, like platinum pilot, whatever it is, they all have the same pros and they all have the same downside. So the pro is obviously you can get a pretty uh, decent line width, but they all have the same downsides. That is typically when you first use it, uh, the line is very thin, so like an extra fine line, and that's done by design so that when you put some pressure down, uh, you can get a more noticeable difference. But I don't really like extra fine lines. <laughs> um, and they're usually slightly scratchy, um, not necessarily like ill-tuned, it's just because I don't like extra fine nibs, I'm not used to the tooth that you get with that. So I don't really like that. When you do flex it out, you have to go so incredibly slow uh, because none of the feeds are ever able to keep up. Um, now I'm not talking about vintage flex. I've never really used vintage flex. I've heard different things. I'm only talking about modern vintage, or sorry, <laughs> modern flex writing experiences because um, vintage is a whole other ball game but with modern ones yeah the feeds are never designed to keep up so you get a lot of railroading um and it's just it's not a consistent ink flow which drives me bonkers um 
and I just feel like if you're gonna have a flex pen, I want it to be like, you know, you don't have to put much pressure behind it. And for a lot of them, you actually have to put a decent amount of pressure behind it. And I don't want to have to worry about it railroading all the time. I don't want to have to worry about it like getting hard starts because then you do railroad it. Then you got to wait for the ink to go back through the feed. It's picky with the ink. It's picky with the paper. There's just so many finicky things with flex nibs, flex writing experiences that I don't love. And it's not worth it for me because like I said, I don't find the desire for a flexy writing style. So I would be using a flex nib uh, just as a, a standard writing experience. I wouldn't be flexing it out and there's really no point. The only exception that I found to that is like the, the Yovo Omni Flex was at least a little bit smooth and it, and it, it, it wrote fine just as a normal pen um, without flexing it. It doesn't really flex super wide. So like, again, I don't really find a point to it, but that's just me. <laughs> I know a lot of people love, 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 love having the flex experience, uh, but I just don't. All right, the next two things are gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> if anything starts a fight in the comment section down below, it's gonna be these next two things because these two things are very popular and they have a cult following and I don't like either of them. So to start with one of those two things, don't hate me. I don't like the passport, not the passport. I don't like the Midori Traveler's Notebooks. They're just called Traveler's Notebooks now. Midori has taken their name off of it. But this I bought a long time ago, I think also in 2016, um, and it was called a Midori Traveler Notebook back then. I don't like these. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't. Uh, I went all out. I had like this one, I had the bigger one too, which I've sold now. Um, I went all out. I bought the little like accessories. You know, this is like the little pouch here with the, the little ruler. I've got multiple different, oh no, I even bought it before that, look. Well, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's fine. Uh, 2014, and also my writing was terrible in 2014. Wow. <laughs> Day one with this new Midori. It'll be interesting to see what will happen with it. I must say I'm surprised that this ink is coming out wet, but it doesn't bleed through to the other side. I had no idea what Tomoe River paper was back then. <laughs> I love it so far. I was going to make this a positive only journal, no negative thoughts allowed, but I changed my mind. It's a real life journal. And in real life, there are bad things that happen. This is real. <laughs> um, I wanted this to be like my main thing, but it just really isn't. <laughs> Uh, got a brush pen yesterday, and I think I have a love-hate relationship with it. So even in 2014, I knew brush and flex things were not my jam. <laughs> Still not happy with the Noodler's Ahab flex pen. I'll never get another flex pen nib again. <laughs> oh, Carrie, yes you do, but you still don't love it. Yeah. Um, so I just, yeah, this is the, like the line version. I even like decorated some of my, my covers here. I got the, the like folio, like the, the put your stuff in here things. Like I just, I went all out. I changed this, like I got a rubber or a, like an orange one to like change that around. And I just don't like it. It's not comfortable to write in. Um, I journal a lot and I find that it's so bumpy. It doesn't lay flat. Um, I don't like the passport size, um, but that's not a, a thing against it because it's obviously like I bought the passport size and a lot of people do. I didn't even like the full size, same, same reasons. This little like knobby thing here gets in the way. This gets in the way when you're trying to write and it's just like it feels like you're so cramped and you're trying to like fight it I just I don't like it at all I really don't and the only reason why I didn't sell this is because I have no inserts for it um that 
uh, are actually like not written in. I mean, I could sell it without inserts. You can buy inserts anywhere now. Um, I just haven't for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I can't seem to let this go even though I don't like it. <laughs> uh, there's a cult following for this. Um, you know, people do videos on YouTube of what they put in here. I used to watch them. Um, and I, I kind of understand why people like it. I've even taken this to multiple countries, uh, hoping that I could like write down travel thoughts. It's just, it's just not for me. It's really not for me. I don't get any enjoyment out of using it. And if you don't get any enjoyment out of doing something, why are you doing it? So now we move on to something that I'm sure those of you who watch my videos a lot uh, and you know my opinions are going to know what this last thing is. It is a pen, so I'm sure you're gonna know. Again, cult following, and I wish that I didn't dislike it. And that is every Twisby fountain pen. Go ahead, yell at me. Yell, it's okay, I'll cover my ears. I'm sorry, I really don't like Twisby. Ugh, here's the thing, okay. Everything about Twisby I love, except for the way their pens write. I've gone into like in length about this before in another video. Actually, I think it was this video in particular. This is the Twisby Mini uh, review that I did. I love everything about it. I love that they you know give you the tools to take it apart and maintain it. Um, I love the construction of the pen. Uh, it feels like a beefy pen, and I flip and love that. I love the seal in here. Um, the build quality is amazing. I love the little facets. It feels great. Um, with the Twisby Mini, I love that you can like screw it on and it becomes a full fountain pen. It feels great in my hand. The weight is so dope. Um, I love that it's a piston filler and it's fairly inexpensive. So it's super accessible to everybody. Um, you can get a wide variety of nibs. Um, I like that they have like fountain or um, vacuum fillers, they have piston fillers, uh, and they just, they make it so easy for people to get into fountain pens to really maintain it. Uh, and it's just, it's so great that you can completely take this apart. I mean, you could put to the, to the thing that I dislike in, you know, the first option, you could put a shimmering ink in here and you don't really have to worry about it because you can completely take it apart um and uh, and really get in there and clean it up but but <laughs> the biggest problem i have is that they write so dry Ugh. they write like the sahara desert okay now i acknowledge i acknowledge that i like my fountain pens to be very wet more wet than most people i would say but they are so dry. I have used pretty much every Twisby fountain pen there is. I have reviewed pretty much every fountain or Twisby fountain pen there is, except for the VAC 700R, because I've done the original, I just haven't done the R. And I've been ultimately disappointed with them all. I will say when I first started using Twisby, I enjoyed them and I thought they were actually great. But then as my taste developed, um, I began to realize that I don't actually like them because I like wet writing pens. When I first got into the hobby, I didn't know that yet. So that's kind of an interesting fact about me, but I want, I want, I want so bad to love Twisby pens. And I understand why so many people do. These are dope freaking pens if you don't want a gusher of a pen like i totally understand it and i don't blame anybody in fact i still recommend people get twisbies because foundationally they are amazing pens i just hate the way that they write for me um now could i like you know alter the nib alter the feed to to get them to where i want them to be yeah sure i could uh but i don't feel that that investment is necessarily worth it. Um, 
at this point in my fountain pen career because I have so many pens that I love um, that I can buy just stock from the factory and be good with then I don't really see the point um, if for whatever reason Twisby comes out with a pen that aesthetically just grabs my soul and just sucks me right in then sure I would probably purchase one um, and and have the nib and feed altered to be more to my liking but I just don't see the point not yet anyways there's nothing that makes me just go like holy moly I, I have to have this um, <laughs> so <sighs> Twisby bless your soul <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> I just don't. I've done, like I said, I've done pretty much every model there is uh, that you can readily buy now. Um, I know there are uh, past dated ones that you can't buy anymore that I don't have and haven't done. But yeah, I, I just, mm, and that I think is what irk, irks me the most. I want to love them. I want to. I just can't and it bothers me <laughs> so <sighs> those are my top five fountain pen things that most people love that I do not <sighs> so if you're still here you're still watching this video almost 25 minutes later please write down in the comment section below what popular fountain pen things uh, that most people like that you don't are. I find it so fascinating, uh, you know, the, the fountain pen community because there are so many things that are universal that people don't like that are just like, whoa, really? Like, it's just, it's so fascinating to me. So write down below, uh, keep it, you know, PG, don't go crazy. Like, but write down below what popular things that you dislike are just for funsies. <laughs> Guys, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit that like button if you liked it. Smash the subscribe button if you haven't yet done so. And uh, new videos come out every Monday and Friday in the occasional Q&A on Tuesday. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you next time.